Colorado voters will decide if marijuana should be legalized. If it passes, marijuana would be regulated the same way as alcohol. That's right, but right now there is no standard to determine if you're too stoned to drive while under the influence of marijuana. State lawmakers have proposed limits to set a standard, but many argue those tests wouldn't be accurate enough to determine impairment. Tonight, we're answering your questions by putting that proposed state standard to the test. Fox 31 Denver's Mark Meredith is live with the shocking results of our one-of-a-kind investigation. Mark. Libby, as you know, it was just yesterday that state lawmakers voted down this most recent attempt that would regulate how much marijuana a driver out on Colorado's roads could have in their system. But there's no doubt that this is an issue that's not going away anytime soon, especially when it comes to how much is too much. That debate rages on. Today, I am taking a driving simulation test for Fox 31 News after I take in some THC as a legal medical marijuana patient. I'm doing this to try to <clears throat> help prove a point that um, THC in your system is way different from having alcohol or other pharmaceuticals in your system um, and it's something that needs to be taken taking a look at more seriously. Will someone taking marijuana put themselves or you in danger on the road? We wanted to find out for ourselves. So we set up a test using a simulator, police officer, and a group of volunteers. Ranging in age from their early 20s to their mid 60s, our volunteers let us test not only their driving skills, but their THC levels both before and after taking their marijuana. Got it. Um, I guess the reason why I'm telling you this and why I bought this little camera is because for some reason I've got this little funny feeling that Fox is going to edit this footage to a bias that's not going to be truthful uh, for the cannabis community. And just in case, um, I'm going to try to film everything that they film so that if they do skew the reality of the situation with this driving test, um, that we can put the truth and the information out there. So. This should be a pretty interesting and exciting day. Just yesterday, Colorado lawmakers narrowly voted down a new law that would have made it illegal for a person to drive with a specific THC level known as Delta 9 concentration. If passed, any Colorado driver would have been considered impaired if they had more than five nanograms per milliliter of marijuana in their blood. It's all variable on the person. Sarah Nill is a phlebotomist who routinely checks for drugs in blood. Before we even started our driving test, a surprise. We found at least two of our volunteers would be considered impaired under the recently proposed state standard, even though they hadn't smoked or ingested marijuana all day. So that I can go back to sleep, which is such a so much THC concentration that there's got to be more than five nanograms active delta nine in my system. Meet Max, a 23 year old eager to try our test. And even though he had not smoked his medical marijuana all day, the blood test shows he's already above that five nanogram milliliter proposed limit. When I medicate, I actually come back down to what you would consider a more normal state. Now, I would never advocate in a million years anyone to drive intoxicated on anything for any reason. Overall, I feel like um, I was a little more calm, a little more stable, and I felt like I drove a whole lot better that time. Max may have already been considered impaired before he lit up. That first blood test came back at six nanograms. That's one above the previously proposed limit. But after smoking for us, that number increases fivefold to 32 nanograms. Somebody who smokes on a regular basis for a year is going to be able to handle more than somebody who doesn't. So when I wake up in the morning and I'm no longer medicated, I've had a great rest of sleep, I get in my car and I get pulled over because my emission sticker hasn't been updated, and I have a, a pipe in my car that stinks because of the resin, the cop says, well, have you been smoking? I haven't. He tests my blood. Well, of course there's more than five nanograms in there. Um, so are you going to send me to jail? Because Even though I had a green light, he crashed into me. Is that OK? All right, we got
This high-tech simulator will help answer that question, and the results may surprise you. Let me do that driving test too, and really ridiculous. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's an accurate simulator at all. Did you do the driving test? I did it. And it didn't feel real at all, did uh, it? It didn't. Yeah, well, first of all, it felt like you were driving a truck, because I've driven big trucks like that. You know why? Because it's a <laughs> truck simulator. <laughs> oh, it felt really, very weird. Did, you, did it make you motion And it is for CDL. I mean, yeah. it's not for... It's not for your, your driving. Yeah. yeah, that was this is way different than my car. Yeah. And then the second thing was is that, well, and for me, they, they were screwing around with me and they kept throwing different things like wind at me and uh -oh. snow and shit like that. In cars that like run out at yeah. you? It's a simulator for devastation, yeah. not yeah, like so regular driving. You can lie at a green light. You crashed into me. Is that okay? None of our volunteers put much faith in this simulator, but can you put faith in the Delta 9 law when some of our volunteers who admitted they were under the influence would pass with flying colors? I think there should be another way to base it on, not an, a five nanograms, because, because it affects everybody so differently. I think there should be another way to base it on, not an, a five nanograms, because, because it affects everybody so differently. The goal, of course, of any law is to protect yourself or others. None of our other drivers under the influence aced our simulator. If the science is true that the U.S. Department of Transportation, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration did their report, this is a report that's been done in the U.S. for over 20 years. It concludes, as other countries do around the world, that uh, the general conclusion is there is little, if any, evidence to indicate that drivers who have used marijuana alone are any more likely to cause serious accidents than drug-free drivers. To a large extent, the result from driving simulator and close course test um, corroborate the epidemiological findings by indicating that THC in single inhaled doses up to 250 milligrams has relatively minor effects on driving performance, certainly less than VACs in the range of 0 0.08. Denver. Certainly was an interesting test. Were, there, were you, the people that, you, that took the test, were they surprised by the results? They actually just learned the results with you in our audience as well as in our newsroom. We wanted to keep those results and show the test to make sure we were as fair and accurate with this one as possible. And I'm sure after seeing the story, they'll be just as surprised about who passed and who didn't. The test itself was extremely inaccurate. The test was done at a school that tests truck drivers that drive 18 wheelers. So our trucking simulation was for an 18 wheel rig and the steering wheel was humongous. It was like this big. Mm. The seat was huge. The pedals were like right next to each other but on the far right instead of being like separated like they typically are. Mm. I'm looking for your opinion. They weren't looking for the facts. They weren't looking for information. They were just looking for what is this test on this simulator going to conclude with medicated drivers. Mm. So I hope Fox portrays a, um, a decent truth of what happened today. Mm -hmm. I really hope they do mm -hmm. because it would be really unfortunate if they didn't. Mm -hmm. but I kind of suspect that they will.